prolific author and apologist, Peter Kriff, says the fallacy of equivocation is committed when the same term is used in two or more different senses during the course of an argument. Now, a fallacy is an error or a mistake in the reasoning process. Would or could an all-knowing God make such a mistake? Obviously not, but this is precisely what Allah does while arguing against Christianity in the Quran. A logical argument involves premises and a conclusion. If the premises are true, then the conclusion cannot be false. One popular example begins with the premise, all men are mortal. Premise two says Socrates is a man, and the conclusion is, therefore, Socrates is mortal. This is a valid argument, but the fallacy of equivocation occurs when a term is misused or it changes its meaning during the course of the argument. That is, there are two different concepts being applied to the same term. Take Surah 2.135 as an example. Here, Allah argues against Christianity by contrasting the Christians with the religion of Abraham, who he says, join not gods with God. The implication is that Christians are polytheistic or tritheistic. But historically, Christians have always been monotheistic. That is, they worship one God. So the Quran is arguing against Christianity while misrepresenting what it means to be a Christian. And the argument is fallacious because it's built on these two contradictory definitions. The Yusuf Ali commentary on the Quran attempts to strengthen the argument by saying the Christians invented the Trinity or borrowed it from paganism, but we, that is Islam, go back to the pure doctrine of Abraham to live and die in faith in the one true God. End quote. First of all, Notice how he practically admits he doesn't really know how the doctrine of the Trinity transpired, but they must have either invented it or borrowed it from pagans. Regardless, he commits the same fallacy by contrasting the Trinity with his Unitarian concept of the God of Abraham. Both the Quran and Yusuf Ali make this mistake because their arguments depend on vague and inaccurate definitions. On the surface, they seem reasonable, but because there are two different concepts of God being used in their arguments, they are fallacious and should be dismissed. Since Allah commits the fallacy of equivocation throughout the Quran, he cannot be the one true God. In contrast, the Trinitarian God of the Bible does not make mistakes like this. It's impossible for him to lie or deny himself. In Isaiah 1.18, the God of the Bible invites Muslims and all unbelievers to come now and let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. And of course, salvation is possible because the incarnate Son of God took on human flesh and died a substitutionary death on the cross. 1 John 5.20 says, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life.